Our next speaker is Josef Kepeshi from, from Kiwi.com, and he will, he will tell us about our journey from developers to real software engineers. Welcome. First of all, thank you for coming. I hope I enjoyed the launch. Uh, this was somehow postponed and the schedule is somehow screwed up, so I will try to make this shorter so uh, the other presenters have more time to say something useful. <laughs> uh, I think everybody knows Kiwi.com or a lot of people here know there's the boot, so you can find out what we do. This will be a short story about uh, like how to start up. <laughs> or uh, how to get from basic engineering, from prototyping to uh, a huge application used by million people around the world. Uh, I will maybe add some few technical details, uh, uh, but I have to mention that I did a similar presentation at the Czech Python in October, so if you attended there, it might be very duplicated. <laughs> uh, so just to start, to explain what Kiwicom does, uh, it's a flight ticket search engine uh, and a travel agent, which means we are selling the airline tickets we found. Uh, you can buy the tickets, and basically we act, act as a virtual airline. So we don't own a single single airplane, but we are selling ten thousands of tickets per day, uh, and we are connecting non-cooperating airlines. Uh, so you don't have to call the airline; just call Kiwi.com and we handle everything for you if anything happens during your trip. Uh, and the search engine is also very fast. It's probably the fastest search engine for flight tickets around the world because we made it like that. Uh, the company is based in Bern, Czech Republic. There is like 1,000 people around the world. We have offices in Croatia Split, Belgrade in Serbia. There is also Prague, Bratislava, uh, in May, there is Barcelona, and there is also a non-engineering office in Fiji. So, good for business trips. <laughs> uh, so, from a technical perspective, we are using Python for basically anything, because you can prototype there fast, you can find out it's useless what you did, you can throw it out and start something more, something better. Uh, there is a search API for flight tickets, which does like queries like, I want to fly anywhere, anytime, or normal queries, I want to fly from Berlin to London. Uh, it handles 30 million queries per day, which is a billion per month, which is a lot. So if you take this API down, you are probably in trouble. Uh, the whole framework we have, and which is computing the routes and all the stuff, it's processing one pe petabyte, this is petabyte, okay. of data per day. <laughs> 1,000 terabytes, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we store only like 100 terabytes of data per day, and we are indexing and searching this data. The response time is six milliseconds in the database. We wrote our own database because we found it a good idea. It wasn't, but it works. <laughs> uh, and there is some Python slowing this down, this C++ thing. But in general, the C++ thing, database is responding in six milliseconds, which is on top of this data, amazing response time. Uh, how we did this? We started in 2012, five years ago. We were very stupid. We didn't know what we were going to do. Uh, I didn't know what the REST API is. So we started to do this website. I had my search engine. And the front-end engineer asked me to provide him a JSON REST API. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Google. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't know anything about web apps. But we somehow were able to put it together. It worked. So uh, if you're building anything, it doesn't matter. You don't know, you know nothing. It doesn't matter. Uh, just start, do something, prototype fast, fail, but use the right tools. Never over-engineer, never, never think about your code too much, because I saw people making the code perfect and everything, and then they found out, 
okay, it doesn't do what I expected it to do. I have 100% test coverage, but I'm not going to use this on production, so why? Uh, use the right tools uh, means use basic code editor or the proven one, which is PyCharm or Sublime, whatever, don't use Notepad and this, all these stupid things. And there is one very good engineering rule, use Postgres for everything, because you can do big data in Postgres, you can do analytics in Postgres. If you want to do pub sub in Postgres, okay, Postgres tells you, hold my beer, here is pub sub. <laughs> for everything, uh, literally. Uh, if you can do something in Postgres, there is a big chance you can do it in Redis, or Redis is a better use case. So if you have these two tools with Python, you're able to build anything you need. And then you just need some dashboards probably to monitor your production environment. So there is Datadog or Grafana or proven tools. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, engineers usually do that very often. Uh, what we did in the next two years, yeah, <laughs> how do you release? Git pull and restart the service. Wow. <laughs> Uh, this, thing's, this thing wasn't good, it uh, crashed very often <laughs> on a daily basis, uh, but the good thing was that we were able to move very fast. So we were shipping features for our partners uh, like Skyscanner, Kayak or Momondo. They just asked for a feature and it was live in like two hours with that 10 minute downtime, but it was done. <laughs> So don't be afraid, if you don't have zillions of user, don't be afraid of downtime. Uh, PagerDuty, you will love it, it's amazing. I think it will wake you up at 5 a.m. Uh, but do your homework. So automate what's possible, do the Ansible or Fabric or whatever. And yeah, <laughs> it's nothing wrong with this until you don't have millions of users which are going to be pissed off. In the beginning, in the first two years, if you're building some company or some product, just smash it. Uh, don't forget to monitor your current jobs. This is, this is an amazing thing I found out like two years ago. We had this issue the, that in Russia, we grew up in Russia very fast, we didn't know why, then I found out uh, there was a current job which was updating the currencies and the rubble was somehow floating. Very, very much. Uh, this cron job was not updating the rubble currency for two months, which meant we were selling very cheap tickets in Russia <laughs> and losing a shitload of money. Uh, we nearly bankrupted because it's not monitoring this cron job. <laughs> but we were able to survive. Don't tell anybody. Can we cut this off from the video? <laughs> uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, it was like five of us at this time, or like maybe 10 engineers max. Nobody knew you have to monitor the current jobs. <laughs> In 2015, we started somehow hiring people, many people, engineers everywhere. So uh, how we did it? It's always an issue in startups. They're not able to find people, uh, or if they find them, they have to fire them because people they don't fit or something. So what we did is that we were hiring people who were passionate about what they did. So uh, what is your hobbies? Coding and shipping stuff, not like biking or sports. No, nobody did sports there at that time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, people, we hired people who were coding from you know, 12 years as kids. Um, but then we found out to make the application stable and somehow cancel the pager duty alerts. We have to teach these caveman people who were passionate but don't really know how to code. We have to teach them so we had to hire people with skills. Uh, we told them how to build a robust application, not the basic one of stupid REST API like ping pong. Uh, you always can teach passionate people. It's really easy, it takes like two months. And you have great engineers, one of them is sitting there. <laughs> uh, and if you do this, you will have a huge technical debt, which everybody knows what the technical debt is. Yeah? It means you do shitty code because uh, it's easy, uh, but you have to pay for it somehow. 
uh, and in the future, it's expected that you will fix it. So uh, what we are doing nowadays in 2017, we are fixing my stupid bugs from 2015 and deleting my comments, do not touch, magic, I don't know what this does, stack overflow, copy paste. <laughs> There was really a link to Stack Overflow in the code. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> uh, technical debt is good. If you're able to handle it, and if you're able to, if you plan to pay it in the future. Uh, but try to document it, at least something like, some useful comments, not like I did. Uh, because, Engineers usually don't expect somebody else will touch their code. No, it's mine. I won't work in a team and stuff. No, it's not true. If you expect to grow, you have to be ready that somebody else will take over your code and he will try to improve it somehow, usually. <laughs> uh, we never, or estimations, if software engineers do Scrum and Kanban and anything, uh, it never worked for us because we found out building a search engine is basically a huge research. That's why I tell any manager today who is asking me for estimations. Uh, it works. Just tell the managers it's research. Don't ask me. <laughs> Science. <laughs> uh, you should be able to estimate like in days or weeks, but you are not able to estimate a huge project for months. Just two tiny per stool, how do you say it? <laughs> uh, in 2016, there was already like 50 or 100 engineers, and this is how they looked like. <laughs> Our uh, uh, chief architect today was like, oh, Docker, no, 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 no. I have Ansible, I can copy paste. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we had to force these guys somehow to uh, move on not do git pool and restart the services, do docker, do it properly, blue green deployments and all the stuff. Uh, and it's good, but it takes a lot of time to make this uh, work in the correct way as you expect. And it's a huge pain. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the team was growing. This is stupid. <laughs> uh, so what we did, or how do you manage these teams, if there are going to be no doc or no, uh, keep them small. Best team is like one guy. If you have two guys, it's, it might be too much. Uh, yeah, because they have to communicate, and they are engineers, though they only speak APIs. Uh, but usually the teams are like four people, and it's a problem. <laughs> If you have six people, it's a huge problem. <laughs> because the complexity grows, and six people are usually not really able to sync really well. You have to somehow manage them. So keep your team sm as small as possible, like three to five people maybe. Eight people is a disaster. And usually you don't want to manage them because we found out really smart people want to be like self-managed somehow. So you have to do a setup that they can do anything they want until they ship or deliver their stuff. Uh, this is what works for us. This works for Spotify as well. I don't know if it works for Google. It's, they have a different setup. Yeah, in 2017, this is the magic. Yeah, Kubernetes, fancy shit. Uh, <laughs> you expect your app not to crash anymore. Uh, so this is where we are now. We will see. Uh, if Kubernetes will work, because uh, anybody using Rancher here? Oh, okay. There is the story. There was the version 1.4. They had some bug there. It was a stable version, but the bug was taking down the production like every day. We just kept using it. It was stable. <laughs> uh, so let's see how this works. Maybe ne next presentation will be about Kubernetes in one year, and I will tell you it's crashed all the time again, as usual. Uh, yeah, and the findings, what we found down during the these years, uh, you always have to enjoy your job. Building a product or any company 
is a full-time job. It's 24-7, including pager duty alerts. Uh, it's your life. You will lose your friends. Your family will hate you. <laughs> uh, so you have to party hard to somehow manage it. Uh, never do it for money, because any time you're doing something for money, even software engineering, uh, you'll somehow get bored. Do it for a shitload of money, that's good, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, any questions? Wow, 15 minutes, I'm good. Okay, so uh, there are a couple of questions. The first one is, does Kiwi use cloud, or are you running on your own hardware? Uh, wow, uh, we're using all the clouds, yeah. Uh, we're using uh, Google Cloud, and we're using Amazon, and uh, there is hundreds of bare metal servers, so it's some kind of hybrid, uh, very hard to manage. Next one, what are the three funniest stories at Skype or Kiwi you can share with us? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, okay. Three funniest you stories. Turn off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know, the first story with the Rublos, that's a like, very good one. Then there was a bug where we lost like millions, but I don't remember it. There was a software engineer like in the office sitting there very sad and I was like, what's wrong, man? What happened? I found a bug. Okay, we are finding bug every day, bugs every day, so what? It's a very special bug. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to write the database that we were paying for some tickets for a few months, so we didn't know about these payments. <laughs> so there was some outgoing money and nobody was aware about it, but yeah, it was fine. <laughs> the finance found out later. <laughs> uh, and the other stories can be really published. I can tell you at the booth later. It's very <laughs> unprof unprofessional. <laughs> no better invitation to your booth than this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another one? How do you handle technical debt? Technical debt? Oh, OK, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there are some general rules how to do it because uh, we believe somehow that nobody is able to do a perfect code on the first shot. You have to refactor one or two times to get to some like usable state. Uh, so what are the few rules that if you touch anything like legacy code, try to somehow a little bit fix it, but don't spend too much time on it and somehow improve it anytime you have to touch legacy code. And uh, otherwise, if you do a new feature, maybe do some tests for it, but it's not like it has to be done. If you find it a good idea, do tests. So over time, the test coverage should increase this way. Uh, yeah, nothing else. Okay, and next one. Kiwi.com supports Brno Golang Meetup. Are you using Go language in production or planning to use it in the future? So what about your stack? Yeah. Good question. Uh, anybody doing Go here? No, we are not using Go in production. <laughs> because we found out nobody in Brno does Go. <laughs> Everybody wants to uh, program in Go, uh, but nobody uh, applies for the position of Go developer. Or if you ask somebody, can we do this application in Go? The engineers are like, oh, no, I rather would do it in Python. You know, it's stable shit. <laughs> OK. What was your longest downtime? Oh, uh, I think 12 hours. Uh, it was three years ago, maybe, we were using a huge Postgres cluster. Uh, and uh, we had some replicas there. But somehow it happened that we smashed all the replicas. We nearly lost all the data, which would be a really a disaster, but we were able to manage it. Uh, it was the same issue as Uber had with replicas. They had Again, they had as well at 12 hours that time, probably. Uh, so well, you have like three or four replicas, and what happened? This one died, okay, so there's three left, but somehow they were not able to handle the load, so they died as well. <laughs> so we had to turn everything off and create the replicas from scratch. 
If you have one-person teams, how do you make code reviews? Your own code review. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Thank you, CTO. <laughs> uh, you have to trust in yourself, of course. <laughs> uh, we have something, or we want to do something called inner sourcing. So basically, most of the apps in the company are um, open, so we can uh, touch front end anytime. You can open issues on front end, you can close issues on front end, but they won't accept it. Uh, and uh, anybody can review any code. So it's like open source inside the company. So you can ask anybody if you're a one person team, just ask a random colleague to review your code. Do you use some search engine like Elastic? Uh, yeah, we use a lot of uh, databases like Elastic. Uh, but at the end of the day, we were using Elastic and, and everything, Cassandra and all these things. But at the end of the day, we found out we have to write our own stuff, uh, which is able to do the one thing we do. I want to fly from here to here at this time. And this is it. It does replication for us. It does clustering and everything you need. Uh, so we kept Elasticsearch only for like the small things like suggestions and these fancy things. Say something more about Kubernetes at QE. No, it's not in production, so it's, it's not my deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, and there are two more. What about Docker Engine in Swarm mode? Oh, okay, can I say something about Kubernetes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, regarding the Kubernetes, we decided to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because we found some guys who were able to move it to Google Cloud really easily and uh, uh, force Google to pay for it. <laughs> uh, what's your experience with continuous integration? That's the final question. Uh, we're using GitLab, the basic CI in GitLab uh, experience. Yeah, what, is your, what is your experience with that? Um, uh, everybody does it, but nobody really, nobody is really using all the features that are there. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks.